And here we go into part six of Dreamweaver on page 49. There's a discussion at the beginning about links and link styling and the, all the states that are needed and needed in exactly that order. Uh, please read through that. It's pretty much duplicates some stuff you should have already learned as part of the earlier class when we talked about links and so on. Um, now we're going to see how we can do links, how we style links here. And it's really the same idea, just using these tools, which are a little bit different. Um, so I'm going to click in a link, a regular link. Oops. Find a link. So I clicked in a link. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to go to my, my uh, CSS designer. As usual, I want to have all. I want to have responsive. Um, now, where are we going to make these link styles? It suggests in your text, in the, in the tutorial, that we're going to make them immediately after the H2. And here's the idea, or it could be immediately after the main and the side. I think that would be just, just as good, really. Um, I'll do it after the main and the side. But the idea is that these are kind of generic things, and we want it to go in roughly where the generic information, generic type rules are. Um, so it's normal to put this sort of stuff mid or with other kind of like regular basic um, selectors. So this will put it in that portion of the style sheet. Um, so when the, we're going to do uh, make a new selector and we want it to be just A. And again, it's going to give us more than that. But if I go up a couple arrows, if I go in there and delete, I'll just get A and I'll hit enter. So I'm now working with the A. It's something for that's an A is going to style all links, right? So it's it's sort of like outside that normal normal L V F H A um, link states, the pseudo classes. This is like an overall using the A selector. And the text section, the properties pane, set the font weight to bold. Okay. So we're going to go text. We're already in the text. Font weight. And we're just going to set bold. All right. So we can hit enter. That will take effect. Bold is fine. And then um, select the first icon for the text decoration property. Its value is none. It's text decoration. I click the first one. It will be none. So I have no text decoration. So our underlines have gone away. In fact, I can see in this little link here, oh, now it's a little bolder, and the underlines gone away. If I scroll down, it would be the same thing for the other links, um, except they look a little bit different uh, because I'm not, I don't have them selected at the moment. All right. Um, so um, we did that. So all we're really doing for all links is bold and remove the underline. Create a new selector for a link. When you type in the colon, Dreamweaver displays the code hints for the pseudo classes. So we might as well, we're going to do these in a, in a row so that it's okay. It's good that that's selected. We're going to do a new, we're going to type um, a, a colon, and it gives me the choices. And I want to make do link. So I'll just select that. I enter for it to take effect. And now we are styling a link. Change the text color to the pinkish orange color we used earlier, which is that hashtag there. You can read it in the text. And I'll try to type it. So text color hashtag cap locks F six eight nine seven nine. Enter. Okay. It's that orange same orangey color we used just above. Create a new link for A visited, and we'll change the color for A visited, right? So we'll do new, and again, A colon visited is one of the choices given. Oops, I don't want it to be capital A though. I mean, it would work fine, but just to be consistent. And now we're going to make the color of that one different. Hashtag FF944. C. Just a little bit different orangey color. Okay. Okay, new group selector for a hover, active, and focus. So we're going to put these all together, um, and which is a fine idea because they can all often be the same. A, this is a group selector. A colon hover, comma, space, A. A colon active and focus and frankly it doesn't matter really which order these goes it goes in but to be to be consistent I should probably change it a active focus 
and a colon hover focus active active hit enter text color and this one is going to be different still hashtag 7 f 3300 also for this group so the text decoration property to underline we're going to let the underline coming back which is, I think is a fine thing to do so we'll click on underline okay <clears throat> um, so we should go ahead and uh, check our our work to see how it how it, how it worked okay so let's go ahead and save everything And I'll go to full live view and I'll go to our links. And when I hover over them, they change color and an underline comes on. Um, this is a fine uh, link styling choice here. Um, I'll click off so I can use this one too. This one is different because it's like I've gone there already. So it's showing as visited. Yeah. Um, this is fine link styling. Uh, typically, we do a background for hover too, yeah, but that's but this fine just have underline come on and change of color is fine. So the navigation. So okay, uh, we could drag and drop selectors. If we had these in the wrong order, we could just move them around right here. If we look at our our code, we see though they are in the right order, but they're up here, right? Here they go. A a link a visited. And then a hover focus and active so they all look fine good um so uh that shows you the order of them we're going to create a um trigger link for the navigation menu on small resolution screens so we're going to be doing navigation which is kind of like a different set of links However, we have to recognize that we want navigation to be very different on small devices, which is something we haven't dealt with before. Um, and this is going to use some JavaScript, which we haven't dealt with before either. Um, so, um, as it explains on the bottom of page 50, we have to create an ID for the unordered list and add a second level heading with a link to list. Um, this will make more sense when you see it really work, but the idea is that on a small device, when you want to use the menu, you might want to click on something and then have the menu options appear. Otherwise, they're going to get in the way. Um, so first, in live view, select the unordered list. That is our navigation here, right? Just come on. And we're going to go, and actually down here in the tag selector, I'm going to click on the unordered list complete. So it's there, and I'm going to go have the source code handy also. There, okay. Source code first, then click on UL, and there we are. Um, the link will turn um, orange, underline because it's an active state, yes. Then press the up arrow key a few times until the element display indicates the list is selected. Uh, yes, well, we do have the list selected, and we can see that because I used the tag selector. Okay. Um, the element display tab should show UL as it does here. Good. That's all we did. Okay. Pressing the up arrow keys while the focus is in the live view moves the selection up. If you go too far, you move to select the nav tag, which we wouldn't want to do. Go up. All right. Um, and then the um, okay. So here we go. Um, with the UL selected. Okay, the reason for my little pause here is uh, looking at the instructions on page 51, I'm realizing that way back on page 18, I skipped something that hopefully you didn't skip. But if you did, it's no big deal because we can fix it. If you were following my voice and my directions here, you might have skimmed over creating the nav element back when we were using the DOM panel here. And it says way back there, when we were creating all these other elements, um, we click on the UL. Add a plus, we're going to wrap, and we're going to do a nav, N-A-V. Hit enter twice. So we have a nav element that goes around our list of um, navigation. It goes around the UL. I realize now that we're on page 
51 and the instructions about creating this new this new um, uh, um, selectors involving the um, navigation area that it's saying that we could accidentally select the nav element. Well, we didn't have an element, nav element or the H1 element. Yes, that follows it. But right now it should be H1, then nav, then UL down here. So there's a nav which goes around all that, that list item stuff, the UL actually. Okay. So you'll need to work that in there. And I can you can see it here as I did it. Okay, so let's begin again with it. Not begin again, no. <laughs> let's just continue along here. So it suggests that we want to get this. Now we don't want the nav area. We, if I select in here, I want the UL. So I can just click on the UL in the tag selector. Okay. And that is still the point. I want the UL selected and not the nav. Okay, good. Um, with the UL element selected, click the plus bar and button on the element display and assign the ID nav links to the unordered list. Okay, plus selector. We're going to do an ID, which is a hashtag, N-A-V-L-I-N-K-S. And as we're heading into these, some of these IDs and things we're doing now, they actually do have to be typed exactly as I've shown because they're linking to some JavaScript where we have these, these selectors are already made. Uh, press tab or enter to, to confirm the change. Yes. And then we can click off and it will stick. That will be fine. Um, so we got nav links is now a, a an ID that has been applied to the um, to the UL. Make sure the responsive is selected and select a source drop down pop up panel. Click away. Yes, we did that. Okay. Um, with the unordered list uh, still selected, choose Insert Heading H2. Okay, so we still want that list selected. I can click in here. I can click in. The unordered list is still selected. It is now. I can see it there. I can see it here. We're going to do Insert Heading H2 and select Before. Okay, Insert Heading H2. Okay. And that didn't actually do it. It actually put the H2 around it. It didn't give me a choice of wrapping or whatever. I'm just doing Control Z. Let me just try that again. The UL is selected. Click off to be sure. Click select the UL. UL is selected. Okay. Insert. Heading H2, there gave it to me the choice of saying um, after, which is what we want. We want an H2 after, but strangely, it's put us it in kind of a strange place. Huh. Okay. Well, this might be easiest to just, if you're having better luck with this than I am, fine. Um, but we want, actually, we wanted before too, didn't we? Insert heading H2 before. Okay, let's try that again. Control Z. One more time, S select the UL, insert heading, H2, and again, it just stuck it there. Control Z, insert heading, H2. Okay, well, I'm having some trouble getting my position assist to work properly, but it's no big deal. I'm just going to put take this H2, close the H2, and get it out of there. And I'm going to put it over here. So it's inside the nav, but not inside the UL, right? Um, before, immediately above the owner list, and we're going to change it and enter, and we're going to prohibit in the word menu. It didn't it give me the text, so I can do it right in here. Menu. Okay, good. I'm um, still in edit mode. Select menu and click on the link icon. Convert it to a link. Sure. Select it all. Click on the link menu to make it into a link. Type in hashtag nav links in the link.
I'm going to go to the nav list then uh, and hit enter once and then we can click away. Okay, so this H2 now has a link that goes to hashtag navlinks. This creates a link in the element with the ID navlinks at the same page. In other words, the unordered list of navigation links. Make sure the H2 element is selected in live view. You might need to press whatever again and assign the H2 element the, the ID menu link. So I've got the H2 again. I press go in here. I'm going to click on that H2, that one H2, and we're going to assign the ID menu link using the plus button here again, right? Sure. So we're giving it this H2 and ID now. Hashtag menu link. Enter again. Um, the underlying HTML code in the nav element sign will look like this. And considering the issues I've had, perhaps we should look at this carefully. And I'm looking at the bottom of page 51, step 9 here. We start with the, well, we have an H1 before that, but then we hit the nav, H2, the ID of menu link. Then we have the AH ref to nav links. And then the word menu, we close the A, and then we close the H2. And then we have a UL with an ID of nav links. And we continue down through the list and we we'll close the nav afterwards. That yeah, looks good to me. If yours is not this way, as you see here or as you see in your sheet, you can just go in and manually change it. It's no big deal. Okay, now on page 52, note that the value of IDs uh, does not begin of H2 and UL. Yes, it's not begin with a hashtag, sure. However, the value of the href begins with a hashtag. This is because the value means look for the ID. Yes, that's how IDs work. Hashtag means go look for the ID. Um, it's different age in this, this is it's top of 52 is now just describing for you again, the difference between a class and an ID, right? When you create a new ID or class using the element display, the associated selector is always created at the bottom of the selector's pane. And in fact, if we go look in our CSS designer here, we'll see these things have been created down there. See, there they are. Um, and they're in our CSS also down near the bottom. There they are. See, they've been created, yeah. Um, to keep the styles in logical order, select the menu link in the selectors pane and drag it into position after the link style, other link styles. Release the mouse button and so on, uh, just below those. So we're gonna take menu link and move it up. So we can use this, we're gonna take, we can use this uh, panel to also move things around. We're going to stick it right up over here. So I'm going to take menu link and drag it up. I see the little line created and drop it. And it's changed my CSS around at the same time. Um, so we moved menu link up and then reorganize your style rules by dragging and dropping in the CSS designer in general. And we're going to move nav links up also just below that other one. I guess it makes sense because they're related to links and so on that they would go in there. Okay, good. Now we're going to style the trigger link on page 53. Trigger link is nested inside an H2 heading. Yes. By default, browsers display second level headings on a, in a large bold font. Design calls for a similar, for a smaller, lightweight font. Because if we use it on mobile devices, the link itself needs to be easily tapped, so it needs to cover the full width also. Since you should already have a selector for menu link now find it in the css designer so let's go back to the source code and let's go back to split view and let's make sure we're all set up here with responsive selected yes and we already have a um menu link now we're going to go to menu link which is right there okay good menu link i'm going to remove all the margins from the element there are two ways to do this you can do shorthand okay and type zero and click away sure let's do that uh, margins, set shorthand, and put zero and click away or hit enter. Same thing, right? So we set the margins of zero for the menu. Or we could have clicked in here and locked them all to zero. Okay, sure. Also set the following properties and values. Text align center. Text center. Um, it is now centered against a dark background. 
extends fully the width. Oh, we're getting into the background color too. Sorry. Background color, 1E. And I got my lowercase on. 1E, 1E, 1E. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Text is now centered against dark background, extends the full width of the div. Headings are treated as block level elements that fill all the available horizontal space, yes. In live view, make sure the A element of the trigger is selected. Um, notice that the element displays border around, so only the text only. So we're going in here in live view, and we're clicking on just the link, and we have just the A selected. Okay. Create a descendant selector for menu link A. So we may as well make it right, right after menu link. So we're going to do a plus on the selector box. I can go up one level. Menu link A is what I want. Hit enter. Okay. Now I'm styling menu link A. Following properties and values. Color is white. Text. Color. I could do white or I could do hashtag FFF. Sure. Font weight 200. It's going to be not so bold. Okay. Text decoration none. Okay. Takes the underline away. Text transform uppercase. Sure. Uppercase. Click the layout icon. That is the layout icon. Uh, return the layout specs and set the following properties and values. Display block. Act like a block. Padding top, padding bottom. Okay. Padding top. And bottom of 0.1 EM, barely any padding at all, and flexible. Oh. And padding bottom again of, whoops, 0.1 EM. Enter. Okay. Just a little bit of padding in there. Um, the element display. So once we hit block, did you see when we display is a block? Now the element display of this A covers this whole area, but the blocks expand to all their available space, which is good because we would want this to be a, a wide bar that could be clicked easily with your finger on your smartphone, for instance. Heading is now clickable across its entire width. Now we're going to style the navigation links on page 54, um, half about halfway down. Navigation links are an unordered list. Yes, they are. To style them, we need to remove the bullet points, so on and so forth. Um, make them clickable across the entire length using the same technique as we did for the trigger link, which is right here. All right. Should already have a selector named hashtag nav links near the whatever. Yes, we do. Find it. If it isn't there, make one. We already did it. We have a hashtag nav links, which is right here, right? Um, and that is going to be able to allow us to get to all those within the UL all those links right yeah um find it if it's in there make one set the fine properties and values in the layout section of the properties pane okay so we are we actually are in layout right now and we're going to go to with 100 percent One hundred percent, not a thousand percent. That's better. And then margin of zero and and padding of zero. So we could do it like this with just a zero and enter. And then we could do it with padding with just a zero and enter. Okay. Click to the text icon and set it to center. Text center. Okay. All right. And then we're going to scroll down to the end of this text section and remove the bullet points by saying list style type to none. And it is way down here someplace. Um, and where is it? Nope. We want the text area. Sorry, text. Text shadow. List style type right there is none. So remove the bullets now. So we've got centered little links now with no bullets there. Okay. Click on the background properties, 
which is this one here. It looks a little different in the text here, background, and click the color well. That's what they call this guy, the color well. And we're going to choose a, um, uh, we want it defaults to black as it did there. Yes, good. Um, which is what you want, but instead of solid black, let's make it semi transparent. Select the RGBA choice there, RGBA, there it is, and drag the alpha slider, it's the third one on the right, down about a third of the way to a value, should be about 0.65 or something. So this is the transparency, the alpha. We're going to do point whatever, six, something, something like that, right? Or thereabouts. So there you go. RGBA color format consists of four things. Yes, it does. We know that. And that the A is opacity. Um, the first three are, so, this is, so we have a little section here that explains RGBA color, which you should have already read about. Um, click away the color picker to close it. Um, and it explains older browsers and, and RGB, RGA, RGBA, which I think is less a problem than it used to be because it's pretty universal now, I think. Um, but we're going to essentially we set an alternative background color, so we're going to have to go manually into the code view. Um, so we could, there is a, here's a little feature which would be more use in a really big project with a huge amount of CSS. We can go to the code, okay? So we're going to right click on the Navlink selector. So the Navlink selector here. Go to code, which takes us to that portion of the CSS file, right, zooms us there. Eh, that's okay. That's something that we could have just done ourselves, but that's okay. This open split view also, if it wasn't already open, insertion point is at the end of the selected rules. It's just sitting there like waiting for us to make another rule, right? Okay, well, let's do that. Let's insert a new line and we're going to add the following code. Another, we're going to put another background color in here. So we're going to have two background colors. So the first one, the idea is it, it uses RGBA, but what if, what if your browser doesn't understand RGBA? Background. color and then we're going to do um, RGB sorry hashtag we're just going to do black right um, 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 three 0s would have been enough actually it would be the same oh I'm sorry we wanted this to be just above the other one that's right so if it doesn't it'll get the one if it doesn't stand understand the other one you'll still have that so we want to get these in the right order here. So we'll get black and then if it can understand RGBA, it will move on and get that. Otherwise it will drop that code and continue. Um, specifying the color twice takes advantage of the CSS cascade. This explains that, that process there on, the, on step 10, um, older browsers and so on. You can choose split view. Click on the live button or leave it open if you wish. Sure. Create a descendant selector for Navlinks A for the links in the navigation menu. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my source code and I'm going to click in my Navlinks area here, whatever. And um, I'm going to go make a new. I, I think have being here is the right place to be in the CSS designer. And I'm going to click on a plus for new selector. And it's going to be. It's going to show me nav links, but I don't want just nav links. I want nav links A, a descendant selector for nav links A. And we're going to set the following properties. So this is going to apply to the links that are within, within that nav links ID. Display block. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. So in layout, display block. Okay. Padding, top and bottom of 10px. Go down to padding. Ten for the top, awkward clicking, okay, and then we click the text icon and we're making a color white, and we'll do color undefined, we could use it through the word, word white or FFF, 
font weight 400. Text decoration none. No underline. Uh, text transform uppercase. All uppercase. The links are on all uppercase. So the navigation menu now looks like this as it does. Okay. Why are we making this weird, strange, big, blocky navigation menu, you may, you may ask? This is actually the navigation menu that's going to be available for the small sizes. Then we're going to make something different for the big size screen. Although navigation links are still an unordered list, the styles have been completely transformed. And yes, they have. But we have to be able to show and hide this. Okay, yes. The process of showing and hide the menu is done with a combination of CSS and JavaScript. Whenever the trigger link is tapped or clicked, the browser viewpoint will, viewport is resized to, or the browser viewport is resized to less than a specified width, the JavaScript changes it. The menu will be hidden only if JavaScript is, is enabled. You'll attach the JavaScript to the page later. Yes. Um, first, let's deal with styling the navigation menu in its displayed state. Okay. The navigation menu's position, both when hidden and displayed, is controlled by CSS absolute positioning. Absolute positioning. Okay, here we go. Highlight the nav link selector in the selectors pane on CSS Designer and set the position property to absolute. So CSS Designer plain old nav links dot nav links a plain old nav links and we're going to go to um position absolute it's in the layout section layout section position absolute okay um as you do so the image of the golden gate bridge jumps up to behind it that's what happened here you i'm not sure if you noticed but Things look different in live view now. It's because this is no, this is now this stuff is now out of the normal HTML flow, right? Um, this happens because suddenly position elements are removed from the normal document flow. They flow on a separate layer in front of other elements. Okay, we'll go back to split view. In the DOM panel, add a class to the unordered list by double-clicking nav links to open the field for editing. Okay, so we're in the DOM panel. We're going back in here. We're going to find nav links. Okay, there's nav links. And we want to add, we're going to double click on nav links to open the field for editing and type a space followed by a class dot displayed. So space dot displayed. Enter will make it take effect. Um, then click a way to confirm the edit or hit enter. Yes. Uh, we could have used element display to assign this class. This has the advantage of not automatically creating a selector in the selector's pane. Or we could have done it just in the code itself. It could have just gone in there and boom, typed it in there. Yeah. And you can see where it is now. We got nav links. Let's go ahead and let's save everything first, though. Okay. Save all related files. Okay, so we have um, the UL nav UL class class of displayed and ID of nav links for the UL. Okay. So UL has nav links and dot displayed uh, class and ID for that same UL. Uh, with nav links highlighted in the selectors pane, click on the plus button and create a new selector. And we want navlinks dot displayed. So we're going to make something that, does, that works for that. So navlinks is here. Okay, we're making a new selector, and it's going to be navlinks. We go up to just get navlinks, and then dot displayed. So now we're doing something that's just going to affect the dot this this discern descendant selector. Um, it selects an element that has. ID of nav links and the class of displayed. And the lit, so we'll hit enter there to accept that. Two enters. In the layout section of the properties pane, with nav links displayed active, use a visual tool to set the top. Um, this is the absolute positioning, top to 135 px. So we're in the visual tool and we're going to top and 135 px.
Here we go to PX. Hundred thirty five. So we're positioning the top menu to hundred and thirty five PX. And this is uh, um, technically speaking, this sets the absolute position for the top of the unordered list to one hundred and thirty five PX pixels from the top of the containing block, which in this case is the, the page, whole page. So from the whole top of the page. Um, this talks about learning more about absolute positioning in part seven. Also, in the layout section, it said the Z index, hey, is our first Z index, and to one, and the opacity to one for the same thing. Um, so, Z index layout section. So, layout section, Z index is right there. We're going to set it to one. Capacity is set to one. Z index is being stubborn at the moment. Value. I have to choose a value. That's a strange way for that box is working now. Okay. So opacity is at one and Z index is at one. Okay. The opacity set the Z index property. Uh, and as I read, if I read number 10 there on page 58, I would have known what I was doing there. Um, it's true as the navigation menu won't suddenly disappear behind anything else. Opacity property takes as a value between 0 and 1. The menu will fade in and out at the same time as sliding out of view. Okay? All right. So we've been going for some time. Good time. Hey, why don't you take a break? I'm taking a brief break as we're moving on to page 59. And here we are on the top of page 59 on step 11. Create a selector called navlinks start. It's set the display property to none. So this is a good place to make it. Navlinks displayed is right there. For sure. I'm going to make a new selector. And I'm just going to see if, if, yeah, if you haven't put your cursor in the right place, it's not giving you your good choices. That's okay. Just type it in. So it's going to be hashtag navlinks. Make sure you spell it right dot, in this case it's going to be start. Making a new selector, Navlink start. Um, these names are particular, as I said, because they are going to link to our JavaScript. Navlink start, display property is going to be none. So at the start, it's going to be invisible. It's going to be display of none. So, layout, display, none. Okay, and then we can Continue from there. And then we're going to make a selector called Navlinks Collapsed. Guess what? So we might as well do it right from there. I'm going to make a new selector. In this case, I'm just going to type it in. Navlinks.sed collapsed. Okay. And now we're going to do some absolute positioning. We do some negative absolute positioning, which is a neat idea. Absolute position. The top is going to be a, it's going to be an EMS, and it's going to be, come on, it's going to be a negative 12 EM. What is the effect of negative absolute positioning? It's described here in, in the text. It essentially removes it, from, moves it off the page. So it's another way, it's both invisible and it's moved away. Um, an opacity of zero, which is also going to make it invisible. Opacity of zero. Enter to, for that to take effect. Okay. Uh, setting the top property and so on and so forth is also invisible. To activate the menu, you need to attach a JavaScript file to the page. We're now on step 14 on page 59. Um, so we have a piece of JavaScript, which you can look at and edit yourself and take a look at if you wish. It's in the folder. Maybe we'll look at that later. And But we need to, we need to connect it. It's like a, any other script. But the thing about JavaScript is it's going to be looking for certain, um, for all these 
these um, elements we just made for all these tags and classes and IDs and stuff, right? Um, so we really need to make have the script load after the HTML has been loaded. So this is one of the reasons we've actually intentionally put it someplace else, right? Um, so we're going to select the footer in live view. We want to put it down at the bottom of the page. So I'm going to select the footer. I can make sure it's selected. Oops, that's not the footer. Select the footer. There it is. I can make sure it's selected by clicking on the footer there. Yes. So I'm going to put this in the footer or after the footer. We're going to choose insert HTML script. Insert HTML. And script should be a choice here someplace. Script. Okay. And we're going to make it after. So after the footer has loaded, when all the HTML has, has already been loaded, we want it to go find a script. Um, and then we're going to find menu.js in the JS. And double click on or click on OK. And that has now loaded a script called menu.js, which is the JavaScript at the end of the file. OK. Um, so now there are some notes about here about how it's supposed to work. Uh, and um, so on. So let's go ahead and uh, we might as well do as it suggests and save everything and take a look at it. Before we do our last little bit of code, we're going to open a browser, Google Chrome. Okay, so we have this big menu sitting here, and now I click it and it pops down or it pops up. Now you may say to yourself, but why is it going off the page over here? And we have all these links here too, right? Yeah. Why is it going off the page over here? Well, it's because this is made for small screens. Don't worry though. If your screen is, is small, it works great, right? Um, down and back up again. But if your screen is bigger, it looks a little funny, but, it's, but we'll do something else for the bigger screen as we go along. Um, so we can make this, but you see how this kind of jumps? Boom, boom. Wouldn't it be nice if that was like a smoother transition? Well, we're going to actually do transitions. We had filters before, but, but transitions are another piece of code. We're going to add the, and if you look at the bottom of page 59, about adding the following two lines of code just before the closing brace of the lab link style rule. So we're going to go in directly and type this. So let's go into the responsive and go down to the um, nav links. Plain old nav links. Menu link nav links. After the position absolute there, we're going to type in to ease out transitions. We could have used the go to code as it says in the instructions to get here, but I just went here. That's okay. Um, hyphen webkit hyphen transitions transition colon all ease out 0 0.5 s that's actually seconds transitions i'm not going to spend much time talking with you about them um, it's another section in the textbook though you can take a look at transitions like filters are verging on the animation type stuff Transition. Now we just do a plain old transition. Again, we're doing vendor code first. All these out. Again, 0 0.5 seconds. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. Um, and then it shows you on the top of page 60 what the edited style rule looks like. And it's just what I've typed here. And we'll see how this acts now. Um, and we should save everything. It's already all saved. Okay, good. And we'll go ahead and look at it again. So now, see how this it's so much smoother now. That's what that that transition does for us. It's very nice. Okay. Um, and um, let's continue. We're getting close to the end of this section. Finally, the navigation menu displayed. Click the home link to select it in live view. Sure. Then click the plus button on the element display and type 
this page. Okay, so we'll go up to Live View, click on the menu link itself. So we get to that, that A in particular. In the editable field, apply a class to the link, class of this. Click on the navigation menu, home link. Oh, I see. Not the menu itself, but we want to, to get out and to go into the, yeah, it won't really let us, live, oh, live view. Let's need to go wider, narrower. Sorry for the little hiccup in my recording there. Um, so I'm at the top of page 60. And yes, we did confirm the edited style should look like this, and it does. But uh, interestingly, down the, towards the bottom of page 60, we have a section about what might go wrong. Um, and it's sort of something has gone wrong, but sort of it hasn't. I'm getting some unusual behavior from my Dreamweaver at this moment. Um, in fact, my menu is not working in my live view. However, if I go look at my my styles, my, my uh, file, and I run it in the browser. It's working fine. So I think, for my general advice to people, when you're when you're in a in one of these sections and you're having some problem, and I said, well, actually, it looks like we actually aren't having a problem. But if we were, is to try to push through to the end of that part, get to the end of the part. And then it's a lot easier to figure out you've what you should have completed, where you are, because you're in between part six and seven, for instance, and then I can help you more easily. So we're going to push on also. Um, just a couple of minor things as we look back in the uh, CSS. So let's go back to Dreamweaver and let's look in the, in the CSS itself, just in the code view. A couple of minor things, which I did find, which not exactly errors, but... I may have skipped a little or something, and maybe you did too if you're following along with me. Let's go down to find the uh, menu link. Oh, where are we? Uh, menu link. Menu link A. And we have a color and so on. One thing that the instructions did ask us to set, which um, if you check your code, see if you have this. The font size should be 0. 0.7. EM. So you could just manually write that in here if you wish, or you could go through the designer and do that. Um, and pause if you're going to go do that. But make sure the menu link A, the font size is 0.7 EM. So that should be fixed. One more thing, and I remember now when I sort of screwed this up, it doesn't really change anything though, I don't think much, but just to be safe, you should change it also. Go to Navlinks Display and notice that. I did try to set the opacity, but I think I was having some trouble with the with the boxes over in that layout tool, and um, it didn't quite get set. So if you don't have any line there for nav links displayed of opacity of one, you should. So please just manually add that in now in your CSS. Okay. So we're on the top of page 60. Um, it talks about getting our our. Uh, um, and if we go to split, clicking in here and, and getting to this, the home link. But the, but for some reason, as I just showed you, my, my live view is not working quite properly. All right. Now we could go to the design view, which is not something we've used so far. And I could click on, I, could, I also should go to source code too, right? And I could click on the home here and use that to get to this spot. But the point is we don't, well, actually I want to go to split view and not design, but live. Design view is an odd thing and you've seen we haven't used it so far. And I don't want to try to introduce that whole other element. So we're having trouble getting to a couple of things, getting to that home link through here where then we'd use their tools and the element display and so on. But here's the point we have to do on step 21 is we need to, the home link needs to have a a, a um, new class added, a class added to the home link. So here's the home link right here, right? And it's the A. So inside the A, in, in addition to 
inside the A, and let me just check, make sure I've got this right. Yeah. In addition to, to the to the link itself, the A href, you need to have a class added. So we're going to add class. Whoops, lowercase, and spell it right. Equals quotation marks. Uh, normal way to add a class, and the class is going to be this page. So we added a class to the, um, and we did this manually. That's fine. We don't actually need to have it anyplace else right now. We added a class to just the home link called this page. This is going to be that you are here effect, okay? And then it talks about if you used other method. Maybe this is just my Dreamweaver. Maybe you're able to use the exact instructions here, but it works out the same way. Select nav links A and the filters pane. We're going to add a big group selector down here. So let's go to the CSS designer again. Um, and let's go ahead and go to, um, we're going to click in here. We're going to go to, and you may have to save all related files since so you just manually changed something in the HTML. You may have to wait a moment and you should, in this menu should now become active. Um, we want to put this in the right place. So we're going to go to Navlinks A which is, now links A is there, That's, that'd be close enough, good. And we're going to enter a, a giant group selector. So we're going to add a plus, and we're just going to start typing in here. Um, and it doesn't matter about finding the right place and so on to get it to come, things come up automatically, because it's not going to come up very automatically at all. Um, this is going to be hashtag nav links, and we can use the, the, the code there. And it's going to be hashtag nav links space a hover. I can use the suggestions and then a comma. And this is going to go on for a long way. This is a group selector hashtag nav links and then a space. You can look at it, probably be easiest if you just type right from the code on page 60 instead of watching me so much. Um, a active comma hashtag nav links and honestly this would probably be easier just add directly into the CSS rather than using this little slot um, space a hover and finally I think yes hashtag nav links space a this page okay so we added this giant selector so this is going to style the navigation links all of them and the and this new one we just created this class and all we're going to do is change the color here so we hit enter twice and we're going to go to text and we're going to ch ch change the color to this yellowy color or orangey color. Hashtag F8. Sorry, F68. Nine seven nine. The orangey color. Um, and now we're going to save all of our work. And again, my menu is not working properly here in this live view, but if I go to my files panel and I run this in the browser, I see it's working fine here. I'm getting my hover now. So that's what we just did. We created a hover on all of them, but we made one of them solid. And these all these links are active and live now. And again, don't worry that it's going off the screen here. This is made for narrow, narrow. Uh, and it's, it works fine there when it's narrow, right? Okay. And maybe it's just a problem with uh, with our live view with mine, or maybe yours is working fine. But remember, live view is not the issue so much. It's how it looks in the browser. Uh, briefly, there's a little section here about what might go wrong, and lots of things can go wrong. Um, this is the, often the place when you get to this point where it's sort of where you may need help. And that's okay. 
Um, it, it says seek me out or my teaching assistant. It may say that in your in your code, but in your in your tutorial, but actually there is no TA this semester. Or the, so just um, try to get to the end of the section, do your best to add the code, and then look through, see if you can figure out your mistakes yourself. But if you can't, ask for help. And then we'll pick up with uh, part seven, our final part, um, in the next recording.